All right, today, lesson 1B, starting unit 3, solving systems by graphing. So we're going to solve systems of equations, or a system of two equations by graphing, and discuss the differences between having one solution, no solution, or the possibility of an infinite number of solutions. So let's get started. A system of equations is a set of equations for which a common solution is found. Now that set of equations could be two, could be more than that. Today's focus will be only with two equations. So first problem, determine whether 1 comma 2 is a solution to that system. Any ideas on how we might go about doing that? Yeah, the one, when we have an ordered pair, the first number, the input, is an x value, and the second number is the output, which is a y value. So let's do that. Plug 1 in for x and 2 in for y and see if that makes a true statement. If it makes a true statement in both of them, then it is a solution. But it has to make a true statement in both of them. And sometimes we'll run across situations where the ordered pair is small enough where you probably can <coughs> test it in your head and other times you may have to do a little work off to the side. Now I will be showing every little step here but I'm not saying that you have to necessarily do that. So does it make a true statement in the first equation? Yes or no? Yes, yes it does. We plug 1 in for x, 2 in for y, and that does make a true statement. 2 is equal to 1 plus 1. Does it make a true statement in the second equation? Yes, yes it does. Once again, we're going to plug 1 in for x into the second equation and 2 in for y. And as you can see, that is a true statement as well. So since it makes a true statement in both, it must be a solution to that system. Okay? I would like everybody to go ahead and do number 2 and number 3. Go ahead and do both of them. Negative 3, comma 2 is not a solution. Okay, so why is it not a solution? Uh, the first one, it, it does, but when you plug in the negative 3 and 2 for the second equation, it's not. Okay, very good, and that is exactly right. So negative 3, comma 2 is not a solution to that system. Spencer, number 3. Yes, um, <laughs> number, number 3 is no, oh, sorry, uh, 20, comma 40 is not a solution for the system. Okay, why? Because uh, for the first one, it is a solution. It is not. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is a solution for the, f for the first one. Yeah. It's not for the, for the second Okay. And reality is, if it, made, if it did not make a true statement in the very first equation, you could stop right there because it would not make a true statement in both of them. So in the th number three, 20 comma 40 is not a solution to the system. All right. So let's do this. We're on number four now. I would like you to graph both of those equations on the same coordinate plane and then let me know what you notice. And this is the point where most of you, when we have been graphing all year long, you make nice neat graphs, you use your ruler, but there are a couple of you who have a tendency to not use your ruler, your graphs are a little sloppy. Um, that has to stop at this point right now. Your graphs need to be extremely Neat, and you need to use three ordered pairs. And this was the whole reason leading to this unit. This is the whole reason why I have told you that we need three ordered pairs to make our graphs as neat as possible. Here is what you should have noticed. When you graph the first one, it's already in slope intercept form. So I would just leave it that way and go ahead and graph. And uh, you really should use more than two ordered pairs because it will make your graph neater. In the second one, um, I went ahead and turned it into slope-intercept form, although you could have graphed with the x and y intercepts and dealt with that it, that way. Uh, but here is the second one. And what you should have noticed is that they intersect each other at one ordered pair. And that ordered pair happens to be 2 comma 3. Well, what that ends up being is that ends up representing the only ordered pair that will make a true statement in both equations. In other words, that ends up being the solution to that system. So 2 comma 3 is the solution to the system. And in fact, it is the only ordered pair 
that will create a true statement in both of them. So 2 comma 3 is the only ordered pair that creates a true statement in both equations. Therefore, it is the solution. All right, I would like everybody to try number five. We're trying to find the solution to the system by graphing. I heard from the majority of you, negative 2 comma 1 is the solution to the system. I heard from a couple of you something that was close to that. What that means is that your graphs were not nice and neat. If you're off by a little teeny bit, it then means they're going to cross at a different point. So you need to make sure your graphs are neat. Putting the first equation slope-intercept form, it looks like this. And of course, the graph would look like this. The second one, putting it in slope-intercept form, it would look like this. Graphing it, it would look like this. And we can see that these two lines cross or intersect at the ordered pair, negative 2 comma 1. Therefore, that is the solution to the system. And that means negative 2 comma 1 is the only ordered pair that creates a true statement to both of them. All right, let's go with number six. This one should take a lot less time. Graphing the line y equals negative 2. That means that if you were to set up a table, y is always negative 2. x can be anything like this. <coughs> or you could just remember that y equals any number is always a horizontal line going through the number that is stated within the equation. And x equals 4. That means x is always 4. If you were to set up a table, x would always be 4. Or you could just remember that any equation where it's x equals a number or x equals a constant, it will always be a vertical line. And those two intersect, of course, right there. 4 comma negative 2 is the solution to that system. It is the only ordered pair that creates a true statement in both equations. Let's go to number 7. Everybody try number 7. What is different with uh, regards to what your graph looks like compared to all the other ones, Aaron? Um, two lines never intersect. They don't intersect each other like in all the other ones. So what do you think the solution should be? No solution. It's no solution. The solution is found where the two lines intersect each other. But if they don't intersect each other, that means there cannot be a solution. And so what that means is I'm trying to get caught up here on the graphing. What that means is that there is not an ordered pair that will make a true statement in both equations. It's not going to happen. So therefore, no solution. Nothing will make a true statement in both of them. All right, so let's sort of summarize this. Um, and I think you have this summary in your, in your notes. But uh, also notice that both of these equations, after I put them in slope-intercept form, they have the same slope but different y-intercepts. And you're going to get questions eventually where you have to recognize that without graphing. So when we have a system where the two equations cross at one point, they intersect at one point, there is one solution, like negative 2 comma 1. If we have parallel lines, they don't intersect. That means there is not a solution, so no solution. These are equations that have the same slope but different y-intercepts. And then we have a third possible scenario where you graph one, and then you graph the other equation right on top of it, and it lies exactly on top of it. We call that uh, lines that coincide. And in that situation, uh, there are an infinite number of solutions. And this is where the equations are equivalent to each other. And a lot of times you can see that if you put them in slope-intercept form. All right? Let's go to number eight. Solve the system by graphing. All right, so what's happening in this one? What's happening? Uh, both equations are the same one. So, they're, so they're equivalent equations. What happens with regards to your graph? Uh, the lines coincide. The lines coincide. There we go. The first equation is already in slope-intercept form, so that should be nice and easy. The second one is not. So if you put it in slope-intercept form, you should notice right now that both of these are equivalent to each other. They are exactly the same. And you should have noticed right then that uh, you're going to end up with infinite solutions. So 
The lines coincide, therefore there are an infinite number of solutions, which means that there are lots and lots and lots of ordered pairs that will make a true statement in both equations. All right, we've got two problems left. Let's check out number nine. Do you know what the solution is? No solution? No solution? Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's the reason why I have this, this problem in here. I created two equations that are extremely close to one another but should be parallel. And you should have recognized it right here. They have the same slope but different y-intercepts. Therefore, they should be parallel to each other. The reason why this problem is here is because if your graphing is not accurate, if you shift one of these two lines one way or another, guess what happens? They intersect each other. So you have to be very careful with your graphing, and you also should look at your equations before you even start to graph to, so that it, you can recognize things like same slope, different y-intercept, or equivalent equations. But these do not intersect each other. Most of you had that. A few of you, your lines were off a little bit, okay? All right, last problem for today. Um, well, I guess I need to talk about one other thing here. Is there a way to tell if there's no solution or an infinite number of solutions without graphing? Quickly turn to your shoulder partner and talk about that for about 30 seconds. Is there yes or no? Yes. yes. And the reason is for what I had just talked about right before that. No solution has same slope, different y-intercept. Infinite solutions has same slope, same y-intercept. In other words, equivalent expressions. Um, I'm not really sure why this slide is right here right now, but let's go right here. Uh, look at this problem very carefully. H have we seen word problems like this before? Yes. Yeah, we have. The only reason I'm bringing it up in this context is just in case when it comes time for uh, S back testing, if they ask you to do it by graphing instead of the normal way that we would do it. Uh, we've seen this lots of times. And um, if we were to do it by graphing, instead of going 3x plus 10 equals 2x plus 15, by graphing we would just set this up as two separate equations, like this. And if we were to graph both of them, we would find the point where they would intersect each other. The way that we've done this in the past is taking this from the video A from the first sentence and taking that and setting them up or setting them equal to each other. That's the way that we have done this in the past. There's nothing wrong with that. But my fear is that if you're asked to do this by graphing, you need to know exactly what you're doing. Yes. Uh, graphing here is we get 5 comma 25 where 5 represents the number of rentals, $25 represents the total cost. We're going to keep coming back to uh, problems like this uh, in this unit. All right, we are finished.